Welcome. In this chord inversions guitar lesson, we're going to learn three different minor triad guitar chord shapes up the neck, and we're going to use the song Natural Mystic by Bob Marley to practice them and apply them. This is a great way to practice different chord shapes up the neck and understand the fretboard better while also playing real music and having fun learning a song. Not only that, but we're going to make it a solo guitar exercise by playing the chords and the bass line at the same time. Here's what that end result is going to sound like. I'm Jared from Sound Guitar Lessons, and I'm a little obsessed with the idea of knowing a song, what it really means to know a song. is just being able to play it, play the chords of it, play the melody, know what frets to play. Does that really mean we know it? It can sound great and it can be fine for if you have to perform it or rehearse it or whatever, but I want to go as deep as I can with truly understanding and internalizing how a song works, how the music works, how the language works that that song came from. What did the person who wrote it understand that they were able to play with and manipulate in order to come up with this? And so this is kind of my goal when I'm practicing anything and working on anything is I don't just want to learn one way to play it or the way to play it. I want to learn how to manipulate it. I want to learn how the elements work and the ingredients work so I can be creative with it. And so with a song like this, which is we're going to learn a segment of it that is just a couple chords, just D minor and A minor, but we want to practice mastering the guitar and mastering music while getting to understand and internalize and be able to execute the song. So we're going to learn those two chords, but in several places, because then we really get how music works on the guitar and on the fretboard and we get to then know the nuts and bolts to be playful with our own music, with our own interpretations, and be an actual artist and not just a guitarist. Before we get into it, if you want a PDF with the tabs for this exercise, there will be a link below. So here's what we're going to go through. I'm going to explain quickly what an inversion is. I'm going to show you the chords and the chord shapes that we're going to use for this exercise and this song. I'm going to show you how the real song goes so you can understand what we're extracting from it and why we're practicing the portion that we're practicing. Plus, you can also just have that to work on to play the real song for yourself if you want to. Then we're going to work on the inversions of each chord next to each other with something that's called voice leading, which I'll explain also. Then we're going to learn the bass line and work on that by itself. And then we're going to combine the two and play the bass line and the chords together for that solo guitar effect. So an inversion of a chord is the same chord with a different order of notes, specifically that it has a different note on the bottom. So a chord, in this case, these are triads, these are three note chords with labeled notes being the root, the third, and the fifth. The order of those notes is what determines the inversion. So if the root is on the bottom, it's a root position chord. If the third of the chord is on the bottom, it's a first inversion chord. If the fifth of the chord is on the bottom, then it's a second inversion chord. I did a whole video on this and how to find the inversion of any chord with a simple exercise on the fretboard, a simple method that you can use in a different video. So I'll put the link right over here and you can check that out separately and there'll be a link below as well. So because we're reordering the notes of a chord on the guitar, we get different chord shapes for playing the same chord, but a different chord shape, a different voicing, a different inversion uh, for the same chord. So yes, to master the fretboard, we want to know how chords work everywhere. And we want to see all of those different shapes and inversions and really feel them and understand them as the same chord. So that's what we're doing in this lesson with this song, with this exercise, but applying it to an actual song so we can have fun uh, feeling like, oh yeah, I see why this is useful instead of just going up and down and playing the inversions as purely vocabulary review, which is great too, but we have to have a sense of how we're gonna use it in music. So the chords we're gonna use are A minor and we're gonna use this shape for A minor. The next inversion of it is this just along the top three strings. And then the next inversion of it is this. Okay, so those are the three shapes of A minor. And then we're gonna use those same three shapes, but put them in different places to have D minor. So we start with a normal D minor shape here that you might think of as an open string D minor shape. And then we're gonna go up to the next inversion on the same three strings. That's the next D minor and then the next D minor. 
you'll notice it's actually the same three shapes, just in different spots, okay? So in this spot here, the root is on the top. I'm thinking of this note as D, the root, and then the shape is around it uh, on the two strings below it. So this is useful because forever in standard tuning, this shape on the top three strings will be a minor shape. If you wanna play A flat minor and you find A flat on the top string, there's your A minor shape, okay? So we'll get really used to these with these two chords for this song. Okay, the actual song hangs out on A minor for a while. In the recording, it fades up. I'm playing just this A minor chord just to show us. The top three strings of it are one of our shapes that we're gonna be doing. But I'm kind of playing the root a little bit down here as well, just to get that. Reggae feel, nice and short. Staccato notes. So it hangs on A minor, and then when the actual verse comes in, it goes to a D minor chord. Uh, there's a natural mystic flowing through the air. So it goes to D minor, and then G. We're not going to be doing G for our exercise, but then A minor. So that's that first part of the phrase. If you listen carefully now, you will hear. So just if you want to know the real song. It can be fun to play around with. And then this next section is the part we're actually gonna take for our exercise that's just gonna go back and forth between D minor and A minor, because it does that several times in the song. This could be the first trumpet. Might as well be the last. Many more will have to suffer. So it's going back and forth between these. It eventually goes to a G again momentarily and then back for the actual uh, part of the song later at the end of that at the end of that section there but we just have two articulations of d minor two articulations of a, a minor this is what we're going to use to do our reggae feel to do our bass line together with it to work on our inversions okay so this gives you an idea of how i want to take the elements of a song and practice music with it practice you know turn it into an exercise yes if i want to perform the song i'm just going to work on executing the song and getting it sounding the way that i want to uh, for a performance, for a gig, for a recording, whatever. But for working on music and how that works and using a song to do that, we're just taking a little piece of it and turning it into an exercise. We're kind of making an etude out of it and just looping a section, which is great. So I just thought it's a cool opportunity because if I play around with this um, and I want to play this song, I will definitely switch around between chord voicings to make it more dynamic sounding, to make it more expressive, to have more control, to kind of uh, not feel like I'm just playing only from muscle memory, right? I really want to, I really want to go with where my inspiration goes. So this is how we work on that. So the first thing I want you to do is just what we often will do when we're learning these is just play the chord shape, A minor, A minor, A minor. Play these back and forth. Make sure you can kind of see them and find them. They're all A minor, and then D minor as well. You don't need to go fast like that. Take your time, but feel like you can kind of see it and get to it. Relate it to something else. <clears throat> when I'm teaching people in person, I can get an understanding of what they know already, or I know because I've been working with them. And so I can say, you know, think of it this way because you already think of this other thing this way. And so to what I recommend you do is is try to relate it to something else that you know. So this is kind of what the cage system is about, to kind of see anything on the neck about uh, related to a chord shape that you might know. But it doesn't need to be the cage system, just something you know, right? So if you know scale forms really well, you can see it as part of your scale form. If you know this minor chord shape that's like a big bar chord version, you might see it as the top three strings of that. There's not a better or worse way. There's just finding your way that works for you. Um, I work with people on you know, seeing where the root is and then making the shape off of that. If you don't feel like you have something to attach it to yet, just work on this by itself. And yes, you just kind of have to memorize it, but then this will serve as something that later you can see things around. You know, like if you know this shape really well and then you're later working on a uh, pentatonic scale or something, well, they're very related to each other. They're in that same position. So uh, in for that particular pentatonic scale shape. So practice just the chords up and down as the first thing. The second thing I want you to practice, this is where it gets cool and where it gets to be the song, is I want you to, well, we want to do this reggae feel. So I'm using my three fingers, index, middle, and ring finger to 
get a short kind of reggae sound with it. So I want you to play the D minor shape for two articulations of our reggae uh, strumming pattern, if we can call it a strumming pattern, picking pattern, whatever it is. You play two D minors and then two A minors and the that are in that same position. D minor, A minor. This A minor is hard because there's an open E string. So to keep it short, I'm kind of playing it and then muting it a little with this hand. You can also mute it here. Whatever makes it short for you is going to work. So two D minors, two A minors. This is so cool because we're using what's called voice leading. If each of these notes is a voice, say in a choir or there's three people singing, what's the smoothest, closest note that one of the singers can go to to make the next chord. This is called voice leading, and it is a compositional tool to make music sound more smooth, more intentional, um, kind of more refined and crafted. Next, we're gonna take this next D minor shape, and we're going to find the closest A minor shape and do the same thing. Awesome voice leading. So one voice stays the same between the two chords. One moves a half step, one fret distance, and one moves a whole step. That's very smooth. Kind of more effective than, well, anything that you want to do will be fine, right? So if you like the sound of it jumping, that's fine. But here's jumping. Totally sounds fine. Sounds cool. But nice to know where all the options are. I mean, that's pretty special to have it connected right there. It's kind of like playing, we're thinking on the fretboard a little more like a piano player would think like, oh, to make this chord, er, just move this note over and you got that. So, uh, so we have that voice leading there. And then up here, D minor, A minor. Okay, that's the next thing to practice in each of those spots, okay? And if you want to do the exercises written in the tab, you do one, uh, you do two on each chord and then move to the next position. So you got D minor, A minor, and then next D minor, closest A minor, and then next D minor, and then closest A minor, and then back to the middle two, D minor, and then A minor. And this is what's written in the actual exercise to do that. All right, let's learn the bass line so we can add those together and have this cool solo guitar reggae thing going on. We have open sixth string, third fret sixth string, open fifth string. That is when the open fifth string, the A note, is the root. So for the A minor chord, it is, this is the bass line. It comes in on the and of two. So one, two, do 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 one, two, do 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 one, two, do 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 do. And so the D minor bass line is going to be the same thing just on string setup. So you got uh, targeting that open D string. Okay, so the exercise in this portion of the song where we're just going back and forth between a, a D minor and A minor, you're going to have one instance of the bass line for D minor and one for A minor back and forth and back and forth. So you got one, two, do 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 one, two, do 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 one. Okay, that's it. Just get get used to that on its own. Side note, I am doing a palm muting technique here where I'm slightly touching the string right between the string and the bridge. Basically, if I'm over here too much, it's going to mute it too much. If I'm off, I get a full ringing. Full ringing would be okay. Um, I like that as well. You can kind of simulate a bass line a little bit by having that muted sound, so I, I kind of like that for this. Do it either way though. Whatever you're able to do to get it to sound effective and feel okay is going to be fine. Um, so that's the bass line, practice that by itself. All right, here we go, putting them together like I demonstrated at the beginning, and there's the tab for this that shows you exactly where each thing lands. So what I recommend is working on each chord, just with the bass line on that chord, looping it until you feel good about it. So you got, just stay here. And then try the next one. All the chord shapes, right? So you try that on all the A minors, if you take this A minor here. 
on this A minor. You gotta jump up here for this. It's totally doable though. Okay, so, and then work on each little spot where you have the voice leading. So you got D minor, but to A minor. Switching. That alone is the song, right? That's awesome. So the upbeat, kind of the, the, two, the beat two of the chord happens before the bass line come in, comes in, which feels a little weird, but you'll get used to it. So you got one, two, D minor, A minor. D minor, A minor. And then try this other section. Here we have the voice leading. D minor, A minor. D minor, A minor. And then after you kind of do it in the other area as well, you have D minor here and A minor there. And then try exactly what's written in the tabs, which is um, one time, one bass line instance each and then moving up and around. So it should be like this, D minor, A minor. Next D minor, A minor. Next D minor, A minor. Back down to D minor, A minor. And then you're back where you started and you can repeat it that way. I'd say make sure you can loop it at least twice. I have the repeats written in the tab um, and that's how I would work on isolating and internalizing and mastering one little element of a song. Just one way. It's a creative thing on its own to figure out how to play with that. There's also inversion shapes on other string sets and you know endless things to do, but this is a really fun example of how we can be playful and work on a song and be creative and also work on all the very technical elements of trying to master music all at once. So that's it for this lesson. Grab that PDF in the links below if you want the tabs for this. If you want to know how other songs work and how to practice and break down and work on the elements of any other songs, put song requests in the comments below and I will read all the comments and take note of song requests for future videos. I have video lessons every week, so make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thank you.